Holy buckets. Can I even do this? Oh! <sighs> Got a tree. My bad. Last year we filmed a video as a part of a production at Holiday World, a theme park in Southern Indiana, and that video focused on this roller coaster called Thunderbird. Everything went perfect, like unbelievably perfect. We scouted everything, we tested everything, we went for shots with the coaster empty, with the coaster full, and progressed to get the perfect shot. That same day, we also filmed a bunch of other roller coasters, and one of them I haven't yet showed you. I've been sitting on my footage of this other roller coaster because it just simply didn't go nearly as well. The longer that I've sat here thinking about whether or not I wanted to share this video to share this content, the more I've realized that there are some important lessons to be learned about preparedness, about what happens if you do make a mistake and how to prepare for that situation to set yourself up for success. So during this production, we had the added benefit of a scout day. So we actually went before anybody was there and rode the coasters and scouted them and walked around and made sure that we knew what the actual challenge was gonna be. And that's not always an option, but you know, as part of the process as part of the day of production, you have the opportunity to walk around, to look around and communicate and set expectations. Setting expectations is the key thing that you should be doing with all of your clients of like what is safe, what is possible, what is going to take some level of risk. And that's what I do with my client. I showed them the, the three really difficult things. The first is that this coaster runs through the woods. We don't know if we're going to be able to get video signal all the way through it, right? And we have spotters, we have people in place to help us make sure that we're operating the drone safely, but at a certain point, you don't know if the technology is going to carry you there. The second challenge that I wanted to communicate early to my clients was that there are these tunnels in the roller coaster. And this client in particular wants me to get through the tunnel to do, you know, as much cool looking stuff as I can with the drone. And as I rode this roller coaster Raven, I knew it was going to be really, really hard. So I had to communicate that some things are going to be a yes and some things are going to inherit too much risk. And the third major challenge that I needed to communicate with the client was the drops. And that's going to kind of involve a little bit of its own explanation later on as we start to go into the actual filming. Here. In addition to setting expectations, we also needed to put protocols in place for what would happen if there was a mistake. All that we're trying to do is say, yes, we can do this. Yes, there's a risk in doing it. And if we do encounter that level of risk, we need to essentially have an agreement in place for what the consequences of that mistake are. You're essentially minimizing the impact of mistakes. Like it would be awesome if I could do everything perfectly every single time, but I can't. When I know that something is even harder, we create the process by which we can continue on from that mistake and make things move well and continue to move smoothly. So now that we've set up this whole understanding, this whole process of what it means to set expectations and to create a plan, let's go into the actual day of filming and I'll show you the process by which we actually were able to get the successful shot at the end. The first thing we would need to figure out is can we follow the entire coaster in a single take? We are now moving on to the Raven, which is the opening coaster for our FPV project. It is pretty buried in woods, so I imagine there might still be some issues. Yeah, we scouted it yesterday and like normally I want to stick my hands up and like go with the ride, but I was unwilling. I felt like everything was going to hit me. So that means that there's less than six feet of room anywhere in there to fly the drone at up to, you know, 50 something, maybe 60 something miles an hour through the six foot gaps while it's also turning and weaving. It's gonna be like the friggin' forest moons of Endor, just <laughs> minus the lasers. I can't wait to see how it turns right, out. Let's go. Let's go lose the drone. He was supposed to like hook arms with me and like. Oh, I was? I can't wait to see how this turns out. <laughs> okay, so we're looking for the right spot to fly from. In this tree line, there's a ton of uh, the coaster. We've got this whole segment and we can see a lot of like the ups and downs of the coaster. And we're gonna try this spot first and then move from there to see like where we can get as much as possible. I think back in the woods, it'll at least not be uh, super windy. All call, this is drone. We will be flying along the roller coaster flight path. Just FYI, okay. launching. Going up the first drop. Holy wind, dude. Love to start here. Down the first drop. It's a tunnel right there. I don't think I can do that tunnel. I don't know how fast I'll be able to do that, so I might have to skip that drop. Jeez, that is so hard.
Holy buckets. Can I even do this? That's pretty doable. Oh, we're gonna have a splashdown. Dude, this is gonna be so fun. For the most of this, I'm gonna just be like sticking right behind the coaster, unfortunately. Dude, this is so fun. How in the world do I still have video? I'm all the way back to the station. Dude, can I one take this? I might be able to do this, dude. After our first flight, we were able to determine that, yes, we could actually fly the drone all the way through the entire line of the coaster, which is awesome, all right? That means we can do it without having to stitch it together. It's just gonna look amazing. Now, can we solve all of the tricky elements involved in actually following the coaster? That means we have to be able to go down the drops. Can we go around the tunnel or over the tunnel? It's a matter of making sure that we can actually do the line that we have video to be able to do. <laughs> Next, it was important to send the coaster down the tracks so that we know the actual speed at which we have to be operating. Now we started with the coaster without people in it so that we don't add any other risk factors. Coming around, coming around. Whoa! Trying to catch up. I need to feel this out again. So that was good. And then it came over this with a little more speed than I thought. There we go. If I kind of just cut it low like that, it should work. Nope. Ooh, it's fast in there. So at this point, we're starting to dial in the line. We're feeling more and more confident, but I need to get everything tighter, a little bit closer, a little bit faster. And so we, you know, kept sending the coaster over and over and over again until... <laughs> ah, got a tree. Yeah, crash. Now I caught a tree on the way back up. I dove down across the roof of the tunnel and on the way back up, just hit a tree on the way up and it just spun out. So it's at the bottom of the first dip, kind of by the tunnel somewhere. You want to go look? Yeah, I was pretty sure I was gonna crash on this at some point. So that crash happens, we're immediately on the comms, we're communicating where the drone is, we're communicating that those protocols that we've put in place at the beginning need to take effect, but everybody is, you know, relatively okay with this. It's like, it's not, it's not creating an issue, it's kind of an assumed risk, it's an assumed opportunity for us to be able to work together to solve the problem and keep rolling through the deck. Like, I'm worried it's maybe on the track, so it was straight over the track. There's a ladder over here if you can look. Up onto the roof there? Yeah. What we do as FPV pilots is hard and we can't be perfect every time. I wanna be, I try my best to be, but keeping this process in place makes it possible to address these issues before they even happen and create a plan to solve them in the event they do. It's on the tracks, I see it. Whoops. Where? It's literally right. There. Hole 82. Just after right the tunnel. After that first drop tunnel. Thank you very much. That was helpful. <sighs> so like the shape of the tunnel is you come in, come along it, and then it starts to like launch you back up in order to get speed to tilt down and accelerate. I accelerated up a little bit, clipped one of these trees branches right here, and did not make it all the way up to the top, and then it fell over and landed on its roof on the tracks. If I see it. Stupid drones. Thank you very much. Don't go too far. When mistakes happen, you have to reset mentally. When I have a mistake, it's easy to kind of spiral and be like, I'm terrible, I'm a piece of garbage. You know, you gotta just find a moment, just breathe, find a way to push that out of your head to recognize that mistakes can't happen and that all that matters is the next flight and the next flight and the next flight. You're still the only person there that can do it. So you have to be able to recover, reset, and get that drone back in the air and get the shot. So we had a bit of a crash, tested everything, plugged one thing back in, we're good to go. I've got more drones, but I wanted to go with this one because I know that I can make the distance. So we're good to go. It's going.
Oh, Nelly. So I kind of took it a little bit easier on the dive down over the roof and back up. And then I got the second dive into the, that second tunnel nice and clean. And then uh, I came through there with a little bit more speed. So I kind of had to bail on the tightness on this, but I kind of came back in with this nice smooth, like closing tighter circle on the, the circle that goes out over the water. And then I was just chilling with it for the rest of the flight. So this is just very much a chase for this because it's so tight in there. Just gotta get it. And with that, we were able to make the circuit at the speed that we needed to do it. So it's time to add in the final element of putting people on board and to go for the shot for real. Holy not. We got safety, so yeah, let's go. Let's go for more. Even though we got everything that we wanted in that take, we wanted another version to kind of tighten everything up to make sure everything was close and dialed as possible. Like that. That was on purpose, by the way. <laughs> Unreal. Unfreaking real. <laughs> oh, we nailed it. So we got the first one, which was good safety, but when they came out of the tunnel and I was coming over the roof, it's a little bit too slow for me. I was a little bit too far behind. So I waited and this time kind of popped up and got a little bit more momentum down. And I exited the tunnel right as it clipped and went up. And so I was like freaking right with it. Like when I went down the second dive, I literally couldn't even see the hole that I was aiming for. I could just see the back of the cart. I'm like, I'm gonna just count on this being in the same place. And that's why we practiced it, right? We went ahead and did a bunch of batteries just going through the coaster line without the coaster being there. So we know where it's gonna be when there's the distraction of the coaster. And I can focus just on nailing that line every single time. So yes, we did have a crash, but we set ourselves up for the best success. And that's what we needed today. So to sum all of this up, mistakes happen. What we're trying to do as FPV pilots is hard and complicated and tricky. Sometimes we just have to know that there is a potential for mistakes to happen. By going through that process, you're creating this collaborative environment by which there's patience and room for going for the coolest thing possible. And that's what Coasting Thunder's team did an amazing job of is saying, yes, we understand the risk, we're there with you, and we're gonna go until we get the best thing possible. And I am so happy with how this shot turned out. Thanks for coming along with this adventure. This is kind of a lesson that I've been learning over, you know, all the time I've been flying. I wanted to kind of share with you my, my process for trying to mitigate the disaster of mistakes so that we as a group of artists can go for the amazing stuff that we know we are capable of in an environment that is positive and supportive and, and goes after it. You know, I was a little bit nervous about making a video about a big mistake that I made. And I hope that it kind of inspires you guys to put your safety protocols in place, to figure out how to best operate and be able to go for the art that you most want to do. Thanks for coming along with this adventure. Please consider subscribing and commenting. Tell your stories about what mistakes you were able to avert by going through the process of communicating expectations. Definitely want to hear about it. But in the meantime, thanks very much for watching. Stay flying.